Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again and to a new video. So I'm in a new setting here. It's exactly the same corner as I was before, but I just moved the furniture a little bit. And uh, I hope that uh, you can see me better and that you hear me better. I know that the microphone is not fantastic. So I'm looking for one eventually uh, for the future to have a better audio. But right now this is what I have. Anyway, uh, this actually is a very fresh baked video because yesterday, as you know, Fedora 34 came out and i installed it on my main machine actually because i just wanted to try it out very quickly on real hardware and i'm showing it to you right now here on the desktop so without further ado let's jump in there now let me switch over to the desktop there you go so this is actually well this is actually what you get when you install fedora so the installer it's basically the same installer as usual you can create your partitions and you have your keyboard layout there nothing new in the installer but at the end of the installer, when you reboot the machine, this is how you are going to be greeted by Fedora 34. So we have the GNOME 40, version 40 here, and it's going to boot up here with this view, which is the new overview um, view in GNOME 40. This is how the system by default boots up. Now, this is something that you might need to get used to. I also need to get used to it. It's somehow something new for me. Probably uh, what is nice here is that you can just type in some programs and or click one on the dock there and start immediately working. But by default, it's not starting up on the desktop directly. So this is something new. And the other thing here, as you can see, is that the workspaces are now aligned horizontally instead of vertically. And the dock is appearing actually on the bottom instead of the left side. And now let's jump actually here into the browser because I already prepared here the web page with the announcement. So we have several few things here new in uh, Fedora 34. The first one is that uh, Fedora is adding actually transparent compression to the BADRFS file system. So if you remember with Fedora 33, Fedora switched actually to the BADRFS file system. And as they said in Fedora 33, the implementation of the BADRFS file system is something that they will implement with time. And we have the first step here in Fedora 34. So as you can read here, they added transparent compression. And I'm going to show you that in a second on the FS tab file. And as you can read here, it's basically saying that compression will increase the lifespan of SSDs. And also the compression improves the read and write performance for larger files. So if you are using a lot of photos or big videos, this is going to surely benefit from that. So this is one thing. The second thing is also that Fedora 34 is actually improving support for flat packs. And because of that, they are also switching Pulse Audio with Pipewire. So I'm not that familiar with Pipewire yet, so I'm not gonna say too much about it. So as you can read here in the paragraph, it's also saying that it supports actually low latency for pro audio use cases. And Pipewire is better designed to meet the needs of containers and applications shipped with flat packs. So if you're using flat packs on your system, you will probably benefit from Pipewire as well. Now we have, as I said also before, the GNOME 40 uh, as a new default shell. And I think the final version of the GNOME 40 shell is gonna be in a few days. And Fedora 34 is gonna be shipped, I think, to general public. I mean, it's exiting the beta status at the end of April, if I'm not mistaken, on the 27th of April. That's the first target. Now, we have also some other updates here in Fedora 34. As you can see here, provides a better experience in out of memory by enabling systemd OOMD by default. And also the KDE Plasma now uses Wayland by default. So I haven't tried this yet, uh, the KDE version of Fedora, but I did actually try the new i3 spin, which I'm gonna show you in a second because I installed that actually on a virtual machine to have both available here in the video. And as you can see here, they need also testing because this is beta one. So there are still some bugs here and there. Now, uh, one thing that I actually noticed, this is very fresh in installed. I just installed it this morning and uh, I'm just giving you really my first impressions. I haven't had enough time to play with it to give you more info that thoughts. But one thing that I noticed is that when I install the tweaks tool, you can see here the extensions uh, tool here actually disappeared. So with GNOME 40, actually uh, GNOME is trying to, so to say, uh, re-implement the extensions differently. When you first install the GNOME tweaks here, a pop-up window is gonna come up here saying that the extensions have been moved and they're gonna prompt you to go to one website and then this website is gonna basically bring you here. So this is the extensions tool that you find normally also in the repositories, but they recommend you actually to install the Flatpak. And I did that actually here. 
And this is the extension tool that we found actually also in other distributions like Ubuntu, for example. And so all the extensions that you will be installing in Fedora 34 will be managed from this tool now. However, when you go to the extensions website, for example, I prepared it here and you search for an extension that you would like to use. For example, I used to have this uh, disabled workspace switch animation um, available when I was using GNOME, but you can see now it says it's incompatible. And if you put the mouse there, you get a tooltip saying this extension is incompatible with your GNOME shell version. But if you want to use it, you have to go basically to the dconf uh, setting or to the dconf tool and you have to disable extension version validation and then you will be able to use it. So I'm sure that many of these extensions are going to be um, updated probably very soon, but this is how it works. So if you want to use older extensions while you're testing here Fedora 34 on GNOME 40, you will have to go into the dconf uh, tool and disable the extension validation. Otherwise, these extensions will not work. Now, let me minimize this window here and open up the terminal. Actually, let me close these windows as well. And let me go full screen here. And let me type in here nano slash etc slash fstab. And here is the file system, how it's mounted in the fstab file. So we have our root file system here with the root sub volume, better said, and the compression, as you can see here, it's ZSTD. So this is the new compression that they're using in Fedora 34. And as I said also there in the release notes, they will add more features for the BattleFS file system in future releases. Now, of course, this is not on par with what you can find right now on OpenSUSE, uh, but you know, they are taking it step by step and I'm curious to see how it's going to develop in time. Then we have our boot partition here and the EFI partition because it's a UFI machine. And we have our home sub volume here with the same um, you know, options as the root sub volume. So this is how it's structured in Fedora 34. Now, let me actually get out of here and let me go to the second workspace. The workspace shortcuts are always the same with Control Alt and the keys, but you can see the animation here. It's different because now the workspaces are horizontal instead of vertical. So here I have actually the i3 version of uh, Fedora 34, which you can find or, or better said, which you can install if you download the Fedora Everything ISO from the website. I will leave a link to it in the video description below. And I did actually read a video about Fedora Everything, but there is a new image for Fedora 34. So this is the i3 spin and let me open up here the i3. And what you see here, it's a very basic i3 setting. I had to change here a few things because it's on high DPI display. So I had to change uh, the DPI on the display here and also configure uh, the terminal and also the light DM display manager which comes installed by default. Now, uh, this is actually coming with dmenu pre-installed already. And it's gonna come also with URXVT as a default terminal. Now I have been actually configuring this a little bit because I actually pulled down my X resources file from my GitLab. Uh, you know, for the DPI, if I type in, in here, uh, vim.xresources, you will see in here, these are the default settings that I have on my GitLab for i3 on high DPI. And I also installed here some, you know, parameters for URXVT. So URXVT is installed by default in Fedora 34 i3 version. Then we have, of course, here the menu, as I showed you before, we have Firefox here, and we have many other commands already available. You can scroll them through as well. And let me actually get out of here and show you the config file for i3. So let me type in, in here vim.config slash i3 slash config. And so here you have, um, you know, the default i3 configuration file for Fedora 34. It's not really major, uh, it's actually um, a pretty standard, it's, I, would say, I would say a standard uh, i3 configuration file. I think not even the gaps are in there. So I would have to go in there and actually uh, create the gaps myself. But, you know, like everything else in Fedora, you find normally desktop environment and also window managers in Fedora really vanilla. So you would have to go in there and then, you know, configure yourself the settings or, uh, you know, pull down your dot files if you have already some on GitLab or GitHub and personalize your installation there. But you know, for me, that's it's fine. I like to have vanilla packages and I like to configure them myself anyway. So there is no branding here whatsoever, except for the wallpaper, which is anyway coming pre-installed with every Fedora edition anyway. 
So this is a very, very quick impression of Fedora 34, nothing deep here. I just installed it this morning and I just wanted to give you guys my first, very first impression. So I'm going to test it out, of course, uh, more. And don't forget, this is a beta, so there are still some changes uh, before the final release. And I'm looking forward actually to see already also to Fedora 35 and 36 to see how Fedora actually implements more ButterFS uh, features in the file system. So these are my first, very, very first impressions of Fedora 34. If you try it out, let me know in the comments below what you think about it and if you like it or you don't like it and what you think about what Fedora should actually add uh, on their distribution. And if you have questions about the video, as usual, let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon or you can donate via PayPal through my website as well. I'll see you very soon in the next video, guys.